All right, Squid Game VFX Breakdown. So uh, we here at the Virtual Star Studios uh, had a, a really funny Halloween party and we decided uh, the day after that we were going to shoot uh, our own take on, you know, the Squid Game uh, Shulabahu. And we decided uh, to do it on a Sunday and do it in our green screen studio in virtual production. So we wrote something uh, really quick and uh, just decided to shoot it. And uh, today I'm going to show you, uh, you know, I'm going to walk you through how I did the post uh, production on it. And before we start, you can watch it now. There was a poor redneck soul right at South Mexico. He was bound to meet the priest at his destiny. Reverend, 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 I can't believe I found you. I need your help. Father, I'm sealed. What have you done, my son? I've been playing them goddamn squid games and this crazy shit. Oh, I see. You need to bring out the devil in me, Paolo. I'm a killing machine. I help you bring out the devil. Oh, hello. Who the hell are you? I am the squid game. Boy. Oh, shit. Red light. So this was also an uh, exercise in, uh, you know, taking uh, the real-time tracked camera and the real-time recorded background and comping it in After Effects, like, uh, like like I've been doing for years. But usually here we do everything in real time. But I wanted to try uh, how the post-production workflow could be if we post it uh, in. Uh, uh, after the fact instead. So basically what we did is that we recorded the background plate, uh, rec recorded the green screen plate, and we also recorded a, a temporary key uh, and comp uh, that we did with the Blackmagic uh, keyer. So the temporary comp is terrible, and um, I'm gonna show you how I did the, po uh, did the keying in After Effects. So uh, uh, if we jump in, uh, you can see here's uh, my totally messy project, uh, but it didn't really matter. Just about finishing it fast, and uh, I know I never gonna get back to this, so I didn't really care about making a clean project. So uh, the first thing I did is uh, I actually edited it. Yeah, I edited it with uh, uh, the temporary comp. So what you're watching now is. Uh, the recording of the temporary key and comp from the Blackmagic mixer. That's why it looks terrible. Uh, but it's really good to just, you know, make the editing decision and then later we're gonna swap it for the real green, green screen files. And you know, I can figure out which camera angles I'm gonna use, etc. And, and the way we shot it is that we shot the whole action sequence uh, all the way through from different camera angles. Uh, and then I just uh, moved into an, uh, another copy of it and, you know, even more fine-tuned the edit. And as you can see, I'm still editing with, you know, the pre-comp. I had never, have, haven't gone into After Effects yet. So fine-tuning the edit a bit. Uh, and moving on to a duplicate of that sequence where I do some even more fine tuning. I start to, you know, get a feel for how this will look. Uh, and this is where I started to do the, the, the this is where I started to do the, the, the this is where I started to do the dynamic link thing. And that's a really powerful thing about uh, Premiere that uh, I added it and then I just dynamic link it to After Effects. Uh, so here's where I start to, you know, get a real sense of how it's gonna look. And then we end up on the Squid Game 4, which became the final. Uh, but we're gonna get back to that. Let's get into After Effects and uh, have a look at how I did the key. So we can start with the first clip uh, of the priest having a smoke. So remember, this is a dynamic link I already made. I did a replace with After Effects composition. So it's just about going to edit original. 
And here's the exact same clip as we have in Premiere. And uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty good lit green screen, uh, good lighting on him as well. So let's check out how the key looks. Uh, I went into uh, this is the this is the file, and first I added a key light. Key light takes care of most green screen, but something I learned just recently is not to use the final result, but instead to use the intermediate result. This bypasses a lot of the controls in key light, so you can use uh, other plugins after uh, instead that may be better or not. I don't know. Uh, so the key light is the first swing I do. Uh, a clip is pretty pretty good here, uh, but it's it's a pretty solid key. But you also also notice the problem that we have the ceiling coming in, uh, etc. So we solve that with adding some masks, just to s s not be able to see it. And then we have. Uh, then we have a great little thing called key cleaner here that just cleans, cleans everything up and uh, fixes the edges a bit. And also the advanced spill suppressor. Uh, and I think I had some problem with the smoke here. Uh, I think it turned out too dark. So I think I added a, just brightened up the, uh, the smoke a bit. But I guess you can't really see something. So let's go back to uh, here's the key image on top of the plate. So below it, I have the plate, which is we did huge long takes. So this is a super long take. We just kept the tape recording. But this is just the background plate from the tracked camera. So this is this is the real-time Unreal Engine background uh, that's being uh, tracked by... Uh, we have a tracking system called Anti-Latency. So it's tracking all the camera movements, which gives us uh, a good match between the real footage and the back background footage. So this is just a green screen on top of the background plate, but I also used an amazing plugin from Red Giant that's called Supercomp, which does a lot of cool stuff. So let's check it out. Let's open up Supercomp. And uh, it's basically, um, you know, a, a very lazy, easy way of doing comp. I guess Hugo at uh, Hugo's desk would probably kill me right now, but you know, we needed to finish this fast and it looks decent and it works, you know. So I did a few things. So here's the background layer, the background plate. I don't really did anything on it. And then we have the green, the key, the green screen footage, which uh, I, I added some color correction. And you know what? I think I just pushed the meshed background, so it just fixed it for me. And then we have uh, Edge Erode. I think that just creeps in the edges a bit uh, and makes it uh, blend better with the background. And of course, Edge Blend, you probably understand what that means. It blends the edges of the key the keyed footage to the background. And uh, this is my favorite, Light Wrap. And I'm usually a guy who just spends or places too much light wrap, but uh, I guess in this case I was quite easy on the light wrap. And a haze. I think the haze just levels out the black levels a bit and makes it match more. But as you can see, it doesn't really match here. You really have to go back to Premiere. And this is the really good thing about the dynamic link because their changes reflects directly so it's easy to 
work non-destructively. And uh, I think I, the, adjust, the adjustment layer, I have a, uh, let's see if we can bring it up. Let's go to color. Yeah, I have a few uh, fixes here, a lot of contrast. And I think I also added my favorite LUT, the Kodak 2393. Just blended it in a bit, just to blend everything together. And of course, the most important that you probably can't see in this YouTube video, but adding grain to everything. So everything kind of blends better together. And some bars for the movie movie feel. <laughs> uh, and I think one cool design move was to have the text yellow. So it feels, it feels kind of Tarantino-ish. So, but moving on, <clears throat> that was a pretty easy shot. Here we have the priest in uh, in the in a wide angle, and <clears throat> let's go into have a check at the key. So we did pretty much the same key. We have a lot of problems up here. Uh, adding the key cleaner, advanced spill suppressor, and I guess the mask. Yeah, the smoke was a big problem here because it went up into the ceiling. And have a look at uh, the super comp. So I, I did pretty much the same on everything. Just a match background. Edge road. So all these frames are pretty much the same. I just tweak some settings. Uh, and the final thing is happening here in with with the adjustment layer to really nail it together. And one more shot that we can look at is, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter. <laughs> and you, you you ever won't notice if you don't know it. So of course we have the huge pit wiper glasses and that is of course a problem because they reflect all the green uh, walls but if you look at it uh, like this and like this and like this and add the wall effects you notice they are really see-through but in the grand sch sch scheme of things you don't notice it because it just feels like the reflections of whatever he sees on the on on the other side of him but uh, actually it's just see-through and adding the super comp yeah it just blends everything together but i, I highly recommend the super comp if you're gonna do uh, have fast turnaround times it really helps a lot and of course maybe we can look at something yeah i can we can talk a bit about this as well uh, if you're watching this and you don't know who I am, I have a virtual production studio where we do everything real-time live with Unreal Engine. And that's pretty cool because that means that if we can get the FX to work, as you can see here, the doll from Squid Game is coming up. And that's something while they're doing the scene down on the floor, I'm sitting here, prepared, and just triggering the doll at the right moment. Uh, so it's it, all this is happening real time in Unreal Engine, all the background things. And that's pretty cool. Uh, we have some more things. So everything that happened in the video is triggered by me together uh, in timing with uh, how they performing below. And maybe I can show you, you know, probably the only muscle flash I've done in my whole life. Let's have a look how I did that. Edit original. So I think I downloaded some free uh, muscle flashes. And I added uh, some null light factory, boom, and some adjustment layer just to 
simulate uh, the hand and the gun being uh, brightened when the shot uh, is going off. It's kind of tacky done, but you know, I think it works. It's so super quick, so I've, I guess it works. So basically, this is a really quick way of doing post production uh, in a, a green screen setting, uh, especially when you have a virtual production studio where you can track your cameras and record both the background plate and the uh, the clean green screen footage. That gives you a lot of control in the post, and I think this uh, workflow is good for uh, you know whenever you want to have more control and be able to work non-destructively <clears throat> and be, be able to decide a few things in post. But usually we do everything live here. We have a perfect, excellent keyer in this, uh, the virtual production software Eximetry that we use. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll do the exact same film but key it live with Eximetry and it would probably look almost the same. Uh, but this is uh, really cool stuff and uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you have further questions about my workflow and uh, if uh, some questions pop up. And thank you for watching. Take care.